Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And I wasn't actually planning on filming, starting to film this right this second, but I just got a package and it seemed like an appropriate time to actually start filming this. <laughs> so this is going to be number two of me reading some 2024 anticipated releases. So I'm not 100% sure which ones I'm going to be reading. And I'm not going to say it because last time I tried to film one of these, I kept changing what books I was going to read. So I had to film the intro about five different times. So we'll see stay tuned to find out um but i i'm usually really good for keeping on top of my anticipated releases i only pick books that i am actually like genuinely excited about to put on my anticipated releases i don't just like put anything that sounds like vaguely interesting like i books that i want to read like i want to read and so usually i'm really good for reading them because I'm genuinely excited. They're usually authors I've read from before, continuations and series, all that jazz. <laughs> um, I read four of the books that were on my anticipated releases. So Miss Layton, Parts Heart from Known by Sean McGuire. I read A Tempest of Tea. I read How to Become the Dark Lord and Die Trying. I read A Novel Love Story. Those are it. That's not great. That's not great, guys. Um, I will leave episode one link down below. I only put it up like a month ago. Um, if you want to see my opinions on A Tempest of Tea, How to Become the Dark Lord, and uh, Another Love Story. Those three are all included in that. Some other books that were on my anticipated releases. Well, okay. One of them I actually don't care about anymore. And that was The House of Horror Built by Christina Henry. I will probably get to it at one point, but it's not going to be this year. And I haven't heard the best things about it, to be honest. So like, up, I'm I want to kind of make my way through all of her books eventually but like that's not a priority so in January I had Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands but I knew I wasn't going to read that in January because I was waiting for the paperback which just came out so I am hoping to read this soon then in February The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden came out I have the lovely Waterstones edition I still have not read it then in April A uh, Court of Wanderers by Rin Chepeco came out I still have not read it then I said and then June, Mirrored Heavens came out, which I was actually planning to read like last week for a different vlog, but the audiobook isn't on script anymore. Like, I swear that it was on script. And now it's not, but the first two are. And I'm like, maybe I just like imagined it and it hasn't been put up yet. But I could have sworn that it was, so whatever. In July, The Sky on Fire by Jen Lyons came out, which... And then in September... Today, actually, Buried Deep by Naomi Novik comes out. And also, I think it's Percy Jackson and the Wrath of the Triple Goddess, I think is it called? That comes out. That's the quick rundown. I have three already that I own physically. Four already that I own physically. And so I, I've got to start reading these, guys. I've got to start reading these. And there is like a couple of other ones that like have come out this year that I'm excited for, but I'm waiting for the paperback. So like, I think... The first one that comes to my head for that is like um the third book in the collar brown series i can't remember what that series is called but like i really want to read the third book but um it's only out in hardback so far so i'm waiting for the paperback which will probably be sometime next year so like there's a couple of books like that as well that i've like heard good things about that i want to read but i'm going to just wait for the paperback this is the inkstone version of um the sky and fire i am not subscribed to them Though, I think they do some interesting books, so like I'm debating it, and I think it's only quarterly, so I'm like, hmm. But um, they did say like, oh, if you want to put your name down, if we have any leftover stock, you know, send us an email. And so I sent an email being like, if you have any leftovers, I want one. Wow, that's a lot of bottle wrap. Around and around. I see it. I see it. I'm starting to see it. Oh yeah, I forgot these come in like plastic jackets to protect them. Also a little bookmark. Thank you. So this is The Sky on Fire by Jen Lyons. As I said, they have like plastic dust jacket on it. Um, will I take that off? I don't know. I might. Um, so here's the edge. So it matches the bag perfectly and it's just red on the top and bottom. Is number 570 out of 600 and it is signed by Jen Lyons. If you didn't know, um, the Course of Dragon series is one of my favourite series of all time. I love it so dearly. Um, so 
I'm very excited. And this has dragons in it again. And oh, look how pretty it is. Started doing only three books per vlog. So I don't know which ones I'm leaning towards. I'm kind of leaning towards reading this. Also, it's nice and short. So this is, I think I'm leaning towards this. And then the others I don't know about. Then I'm also kind of leaning towards the sky on fire. But then I can't choose between like this or as I said we'll see if we can get Mirrored Heavens audiobook or maybe Bear Deep since it did come out today I haven't actually ordered a physical copy of it yet because I don't know what I want to do about that um just because again I have all of her books in paperback so we're not going to stress about it for too much I am going to probably read this though so I've read the first two stories in Bear Deep by Name and Ovik and I'm so far really liking it but I'm having fun the first one was like a fun like pirate story about a woman who like is growing up in like you know very proper you know they're looking for a husband and she's like no that's not for me and then um it gets involved with pirates accidentally um and then the second one so it takes place in a deadly education universe and it just made me immediately want to go reread read those books like and what I love is there's so many different narrators and the narrator for the Delhi Education one is the narrator for that entire series. Like Naeem Novik herself does like the introduction to the stories, but Simon Vance, who narrated all of the Temeraire books, which is how I originally read them, he's back for the short stories, which I'm really excited because as I said, like that is how I originally read them. Whereas with like a Delhi Education, I'm not as I guess attached to the narrator because I read the first one physically. I don't know what I did with the second one. Maybe it will, I think I might have mixed. And then the third one I did, the audiobook. The pirate story was either like the world or the characters or something were actually mentioned in a pirate anthology she wrote a story for years ago. But as I said, I haven't actually read any of her short stories. I don't know if she's included in a lot of anthologies. Something for me to, I guess, look into. Um, I have read all of her physical, like, full-length novels, though. I just, like, I guess it's nice to be back with characters. It's nice to just get little bits of stuff I haven't seen before. This is her next series in here, so that's exciting. But, like, as I said, like, I feel like, for me, name and of it, she isn't, a, like, she's a favourite author, but she's not, like, a five-star favourite, like, obsessed with her book like you know like the way like V. Schwab or Robin Hobb are for me where I'm just like I love their books so much like you know their favorite authors that way with Naomi Novik like she's in favorite author because she's reliable I'm not saying like Robin Hobb or V. Schwab aren't because like obviously like I give most V. Schwab and Robin Hobb books five stars I think I've given I think I've given both of them like one or two three stars and a couple of four stars as well but it's mostly five stars i mean I'm like every single book is a four star except for one which was a five I think it's just a comfort to be back with her storytelling i have read two more short stories in in very deep i read vici yes and so that is a short story i think the shortest so far but i just said in the world of temeraire it has the same narrator that temeraire has and i really enjoy his narration so it was really nice to obviously have him back to do that short story and it is like a short story that it tells like the origin of using dragons for like military purposes and like it goes back to ancient rome i just i really enjoyed that like it was really short so like there's not much to say but like i love me some dragons i love me some temeraire and like any of it will do you know so yeah and then the next the one after that was actually buried deep and i like that one it's a greek retelling which i think is really a lot of these are short stories that have been included in like other collections some of them are like original draft kind of things some of them have only just been written for this um so there's like a good variety and i think like looking at like the different like ideas behind it because like she usually has like a sentence of, or two of like introduction and like kind of like where her thought process came from all of these and like obviously like such different like time periods and like like just different atmospheres like 
she's doing a lot and yeah in fairness i will say i i know the story of like the minotaur but also do i know the kid friendly version that i read when i was 10 years old yeah i feel like it wasn't clear what i was trying to say there but basically i was trying to say that like obviously as a kid i went to like a greek myth phase as every child does and i read like this whole box set that my school had and obviously like this story is a retelling of the minotaur story but like i don't know if i've actually read like the adult story because like re through like like listening to like hades town watching hades town like playing hades the game reading percy jack and all that like i've been exposed to myths and then i've gone and like looked up the original ones and like because like obviously i've had like re vague recollections of them from like that whole box set when i was a kid was a kid but i guess none of them really go into that i mean battle of the labyrinth does go into it a little bit but i don't think i've ever actually like looked up the adult version um so like i'm curious whether if i had read that maybe the short story like would have connected to me before more or like i don't know basically i'm like would i have liked it more would i have liked it less if i kind of had more context around it um but like i just blabbered and did not make a point whatsoever i, I enjoyed it i enjoyed the writing it was definitely i think a different which i always say about me when i was very impressive that she's able to do that every time we have finished very deep i obviously i had been in like updating you like roughly like every two stories and then i gave up because if you can't tell i feel like it's not as noticeable but uh i'm a little stuffy not feeling very good and so yesterday i just finished the audiobook i just put it on and just curled in the wall and was like this is great now <laughs> So I have finished Very Deep. I'm giving it a four stars overall. I would say most of the stories were three or four stars. Maybe like, I don't give short stories five stars really. But like, I feel like mm, I had an overall like really fun time. So I was giving, I'm giving it a four overall. I don't do half stars. I don't average things out. I'm not going to go through and be like, this was a three. This was like, I feel like overall it was a four star. Some I liked more than others. I feel like the stories that I liked the most were stories that I already knew about the world or all of this stuff so like the story set in the world of a deadly education i loved being back in skullman's even just for a second uh uh this story that was titled spinning silver which was basically her original idea of spinning silver which it was so interesting to see how that story like the bones of it is there so much of what happens in that story is still in that very short story but so much of it is like expanded on and like changed like people are killed off and all of this and how that's all done like i was so interested by it the stories that were set in the temeraire world i love me some temeraire my favorite one was probably the pride and prejudice retelling with dragons and i actually haven't read pride and prejudice and also i'm really struggling to say prejudice <laughs> but for the first time ever, I was like, should I read it? <laughs> like, I'm not really that into classics, but I don't know. I was just like, maybe I should try it. But I think that was probably my favorite one. It's so impressive. I think how she changes her writing style from story to story. That is something that I have always been in awe of when it comes to Naomi Novik. And as I said, I do think probably the fact that I liked the stories that were set in the world. Like, yes, I still like they didn't have like the characters I loved but like I was already familiar with the world the context and all of that and so just being back in these situations made me very happy <laughs> and so like she didn't have to do any like sort of like build up because I was like immediately like I know what's going on here like whereas like with other stories like obviously she had to do that and I'm not saying that like they were bad short stories they weren't I still actually enjoyed all of those but like obviously I'm going to enjoy stories that like have stuff I'm already familiar with it with and that's why I don't really read short stories very often but as I said still a good time overall four stars I would overall recommend I guess if you're interested in Naomi Nova I think today I'm going to start on Emily Well. you can see it literally on top of those books there right beside my where I'm curling in a ball um <laughs> Because I just think that's going to be like the easiest, I hope, to, thing to read. Like, I remember flying through the first book. Like, I ate it up. I was just so drawn into the story. So I'm hoping that happens again. And like, I'm going to be like, feeling like great reading it. That's the hope. Because I just don't think that like, this should be reading this right now. I suppose I'll see you when I'm 50% of the way through.
so this is the 50% I think I'm 50% of the way through uh, into Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett so this is obviously book two so we will be a little vague perhaps so the first book follows Emily as she sets off to write her encyclopedia of fairies and she arrives in this small like wintry very cold town and the locals immediately don't like her because she's meddling in their business basically and basically they don't think you should mess with fairies which sensible her co-worker who she has a bit of a rivalry with Wendell Bumblebee shows up and he too annoys the locals and this is very strange because usually people are immediately charmed by him and so the two of them end up working together and there's like it's very strange because like I don't think like like it's not overly romantic but it is still heavily romantic like their dynamic like there's no like grand gestures and stuff like that I see a lot of people being like fantasy romance and, like it is and it isn't because I feel like it is like extremely like romantic in nature but I can't really say that it's like a romantic or a fantasy romance because like but it is very much smaller scale like I feel like a lot of these like romanticies and stuff like that it's very grand scale you know they're off on a quest save the world you know save each other and all of that and like that's not necessarily like yeah they do have those moments but it's a lot more it's their dynamic just them deeply caring about each other like I think it's a lot kind of more understated than like grand sweeping gestures kind of a thing so which I do love about it their dynamic the way that they are so caring like are so concerned for each other but also the way like he knows exactly what to do to kind of like get under her skin like their dynamic is just so so good and like there's like a slight bit of angst which i love and i'm just eating it up what can i say and also like i discovered that i really love stories like this and like natural history of dragons where it's like i guess diary memoir kind of stuff where it's like very like scientific based this one is not as much scientific based compared to natural history like she talks about it like the science that is happening but like it is a lot more kind of nearly personal this is her diary so she's kind of just like getting out all her frustrations and of course because she loves her job so deeply it, she like has to discuss her work because it's part of who she is if you like that part of this book i totally recommend that series but like the fairies like the dynamic between like emily and wendell like it very much reminds me of the um the regency era fairy tales by olivia atwater so if that's the part that you love like kind of again kind of like understated like romance with fairies then i totally recommend that series i did read this last year for the first one for the goodreads choice awards and i think one of my biggest complaints was i just there was something about the world building that slightly annoyed me like i appreciated like how much detail she was trying to put into like creating like all of these different fairies and their dynamics and all of that but it annoyed me a little the fact that like she set it in the real world but then like created a magical country to go to and i was like why would you do that i don't understand it that is clearly based off other countries like just do your research on that country <laughs> whereas in this one she clearly just did away with that she's like no i'm gonna just set it in the real world so that was like a very nitpicky issue but it was an issue i had so i appreciate it <laughs> but i'm having a good time i really enjoy the writing i really enjoy the characters and their dynamic and i mean the plot is interesting enough as well they're trying to find some magical doors so that's fun i might read another chapter or two though before i go to sleep hello everyone i have two separate blankets on me i'm not feeling great but we shall continue i as is, i read like two a wish more chapters of and though i had a map of the other lands last night i think about page 200 
hopefully I'll finish it today. But um, obviously after that, I'm supposed to read Sky on Fire. But um, this just arrived. I didn't think it would arrive until next week. It's Percy Jackson. So the plans may be derailed. I hate Waterstones packages though. It's so hard to open sometimes. So look at those edges. Look at that edge. <laughs> Percy Jackson and the Wrath of the Triple Goddess by Rick Riordan. There's the edge. I don't know what it looks like underneath. It's just purple. Yeah, Percy Jackson has saved the world multiple times, battling monsters, titans, and even death itself. So graduating high school should be a piece of cake, right? Wrong. Percy needs three recommendation letters from the gods before his final year in school comes to an end. And there's one thing Percy knows for sure, the Greek gods don't do anything for free. So to secure his second letter, Percy and his friends agree to a new quest, pet sitting. This book is 320 pages long, but the text is this big and it's a mental word. So I kind of want to read it right now. <laughs> but also I said that I was going to read Sky on Fire. But also, yeah, I suppose I'll see you later. <laughs> when I've actually read something. Hold on. So, I'm trying to get like the most use out of this Taylor Swift Aerostore t-shirt before, because like we're getting into autumn. Like it's been cold the past like week or so. So t-shirt weather is just about done and I paid a ridiculous amount of money for a t-shirt. So <laughs> gotta get a couple more wears in until next year. I finished Emily Wilde's Inci not Encyclopedia of Fairies, Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. And honestly, like it's been like a couple of days. I probably finished it like four days ago or something but I um have been like kind of procrastinating talking about it not because I didn't like it or anything I did I really enjoyed it I gave it a four stars I feel roughly the same about this as I did the first one I think I might have liked the first one slightly more but I still really enjoyed it I go on a whole rant so apologies <laughs> and this is gonna sound so stupid apologies but like I just find it like this kind of book I find very difficult to talk about because like what is this kind of book because like e it's not a fantasy romance. It's not a romantic, but it's not not a romantic, you know? <laughs> and I feel like put, you know, an epic fantasy in front of me, be like, okay, yeah, so this is what I liked, the characters, the relationships, the world building, the politics, the plot, blah, 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 blah. And then with this, it's like, it's a little harder because like, I mean, here's the thing is I'm always a character driven reader. So even though like those epic adult fantasies, like, yes, I talk about all of the other stuff, like, I do love me some good world building as well but like if I love characters if I love like the dynamics between them the relationships all of that I tend to enjoy them more. For some reason I find it so much more difficult when like I would say at the forefront of the story is the characters like this so much is and I think this the sequel more than the first book is very much about the relationship and the characters not saying that there's not a plot but like this is what I'm saying this is a rant this is like a rambling thing that makes no sense but like it's why I find it hard to talk about this book not what I think of when I think of a romantic you know I think of like you know Chris Broadbent and Sarah J Maas and Jennifer L Armentrout and all of those and like even like I don't, okay I don't really like any of them and so I'm like is it just me being against fantasy romance since I haven't like loved any of them I have liked a couple but and that's why I don't want to categorize it as that but like I just feel like there's a different vibe and so like I feel like people who love those kind of books might necessarily love this not saying that like I need to like try and find the audience for this because it has such a huge following but like it's why I find it difficult to talk about this book and same with like Half a Soul and all of those like I love those books so much but like I mean there's no like steam but like not everyone wants that and yeah I just don't know I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> the point I do think the first book like in the first book Emily wants to write her encyclopedia of fairies and so she on her own kind of sets off on a journey to this place to study the fairies of this location to get all the information she needs and so I feel like the first book is like very much like like the driving factor as to how that story started is Emily's own desires for like her research and stuff like this whereas in this one the desire the what sets the plot off is actually to do with her relationship with Wendell like so I feel like maybe the first one like I because uh, I saw a lot of people being like I don't really understand why this wasn't in the romantic category and was in the fantasy category I can definitely understand why the first book is in the fantasy category because to me because of the fact 
she starts off and all of this what she is doing is for her own kind of like wishes I'm not saying that like she's she also obviously wants to do this because she cares about someone but like she's doing it because she cares about her research in the first book and then like Wendell shows up and she's like oh and then like obviously we see a connection developing between them and all of that but I think that's why to me I'm like book one is fantasy whereas like this one I'm a little more like this is maybe a little more romance -y, fantasy romance I don't know I don't know because people have different feelings on what each of those are but because they're trying to make a map and that all connects to like Wendell and his story and that is like the driving factor as to why she wants to do this obviously like she loves learning about fairy history and all of that she studies it like it's her job and she's very passionate about it but the reason she wants to do this at this specific time is because of him which I feel like makes it more romantic in nature just because like the whole reasons for the book starting is because of something that happened because of their connection together and I'm not complaining about that I like that <laughs> I think that they're a great they have a great dynamic they're very entertaining I have a great time reading about them that's why I like the book and I feel like that's why most people probably read these books is because of them and I do think maybe that's why I didn't love this quite as much just because I wanted a bit more of like her academic nature because I find that so fascinating it's what I loved about book one as well obviously I also loved her as a character and him as a character and them together and I love that here and I also loved kind of like we got a new character and like he's kind of protective about her and like she kind of I mean sometimes he does stuff just the wrong way he's kind of like nearly an older fatherly kind of figure like he does stuff the wrong way and like I would also be very annoyed but then sometimes he is like genuinely trying to be helpful and like she takes it the wrong way and so there's a lot of like clashing it's kind of entertaining and then we also have the introduction to of her niece and so that's also a whole so there's like a whole load more like important characters we're getting a lot more in connections it's all very interesting so I overall enjoyed this <laughs> um but yeah four stars good time it's Percy Jackson I I realize I don't even have the cover on it, so me holding this up is pointless. Okay, I'm 14 pages into this book and I'm going to say something that I'm going to rant about for a little bit and it's not actually important at all, but I feel the need to say it because basically his mother is in a cafe writing her book and Percy says, could I have written a novel there? No way, aside from the fact I could never write a novel anywhere, this place is way too distracting. And that is just not true, Percy Jackson, because canonically in the Percy Jackson universe, you have written two books. Because Percy Jackson and Greek heroes and Percy Jackson and the Greek gods are technically, obviously they're Rick Ryan books, but while he is the narrator of these books, in those books, he explicitly says that he is writing them. So those are books of Percy Jackson writing. So that's actually just not true. Rick Ryan, you're a liar. Because you canonically made it that Percy has written two books. <laughs> Rick, the details. Seriously, my dude. Like, we all know he has uh, had some issues with continuity in the past, let's say. Wrote the wrong name. And nobody caught it. So it's not just his fault. Everyone who read this book before it came out. Seriously, dude. I mean, it's not that big a deal. I will forget about it in about 30 seconds, but... I feel like this is way more, like, potty humour in it than previous books have and I am not vibing with it because I am not a eight-year-old boy. Okay this isn't even a 50% update but I'm not sure I'm liking this. I feel like Rick Riordan has really leaned into the fan service. These are like the fan like ideas of what happens afterwards, a lot of like their headcanons and he's making them true and so it doesn't feel like his story. It feels like a weird compilation of like everybody's fan theories and I get that maybe he doesn't want to rock the boat with like older fans and obviously I'm not like suggesting he makes anything terrible happen to these characters or something like that but you are putting the fact that you like don't want to somehow offend fans by like not sticking to their ideas of what Percy is like or Annabeth is like or the relationship is like then it's not your story anymore and I get that you can say that like once in other pots a story out there it's no longer those it's everybody's and like I get that but at the end of the day he is the one that is controlling the story and it just feels so fake 
like that's the only way i can describe it it doesn't and like i didn't feel this way about chalice of the Gun. like i definitely noticed it was very fan fictiony if i do say so myself but like it was good fan fiction and like i had a great time i gave it a five star but i think what helped it was like there was like this theme of it of like accepting growing up like coming to terms with the fact that like things are changing and the way your life is going is about to change because obviously he's getting ready for college and all that stuff and all that comes along with that and that's a big deal and it kind of felt also like a way of speaking to like the older one audience who have grown up with these books as well as speaking to the younger ones of a very much like it's okay to embrace growing up and all of that whereas with this book there's nothing of stuff there's like nothing of substance to it like there's no deep themes and the characters i'm sorry Rick Riordan, Percy Jackson is not an idiot. I don't know why this many books in, you are all of a sudden like rewriting his character. Like I'm genuinely frustrated. Like the inconsistencies are constant. As I said earlier, like, okay, yeah, he didn't write novels, but he did write two books within the universe, technically. They mention Leo, tutors him in Spanish. When would Leo have done this? On the Argo? when Percy was not thinking about class because this is between before Leo shows back up at camp so like that's not true <laughs> like it's, I'm still having fun but also and, and I mentioned earlier also the body humor like within like 10 pages we had like four fart jokes I'm like sorry no okay so it's been <laughs> a couple of days so after I finished talking to you the last day 62 pages I got in I decided I was just gonna take I, I mean I had to work anyway so I was like I'm gonna just like not read this to take a break from this because I just like wasn't vibing with it and I just felt weird because I was like is it is it me am I the problem like I didn't know what to feel about it so I put it down for a few days it's a couple of days later um as you can hear I'm feeling slightly better um still a little but much better and I'm now halfway through and I'm definitely liking it more than I was but I do definitely still have problems I when we have scenes and it's just Percy by himself doing things I'm like yes this is a Percy Jackson book but when he's with Annabeth and Grover it doesn't feel like any of them are themselves and like that's just really strange because like I mean I I found that in the Childs of the Gods, I, I loved the dynamic. It was like such a blast from the past and all of that. Like, okay, there was, there was like a couple of moments where I was like, this is very like fan servicey and all of that. But, you know, in general, I thought they acted pretty like themselves. Whereas like, I don't know, as I said, when Percy is like by himself, like, you know, like we had a scene between him and Hecuba. Yeah. Hecuba is the hellhound and it just like it was very much I was like yes this is just such Percy you know this is so Percy and but then like when he's with Grover and Annabeth I don't think any of them act like themselves or what at least what I imagine the characters and I'm like maybe I need to reread the series maybe this is what their characters are but yeah I don't know it just I don't know how to explain it but there's just like something off and so like I'm really enjoying it when like when we don't have the characters together which is so odd because I usually find that that's what I love I love the three of them together and then also again it is the constant potty humor I can't I can't get over it it's genuine like every time a joke gets made like I'm genuinely thinking that like it would be a four star but I think I'm gonna have to bring it down to a three just for the amount of like pee jokes it's constant I think I just wish like something that is not talked about in this book is like a lot of the time which like this does kind of stick with what we know of Percy's character is like he doubts himself quite a bit usually he has people supporting him whereas in this book it didn't feel like Grover and Annabeth were it felt like in his head he was like oh you know like for example Annabeth's friends from school he's like oh I don't think they like me I don't think they think I'm good enough for her and then like it's never actually talked about like he doesn't have a conversation with Annabeth about it or anything like that she's like oh well they're probably right about that and it's like 
Okay, moving on. And later on, Annabeth is having a conversation about, well, we've all made mistakes before and just starts listing a load of mistakes that Percy has made. And I was like, I get that, like, it's supposed to be, it would only be funny if we weren't in Percy's head and saw th that that bothers him. And he never says it. And like, I don't know, like, it bothered me because, like, that's not a good way to be. <laughs> like, and like also like because like one of the things Annabeth mentioned was um mailing Medusa's head to Olympus as a mistake that wasn't a mistake that was fully intentional and at the end of the day it worked out silly me because like I guess I shouldn't be taking it so seriously except you know I think when you're constantly <laughs> in a character's head that's like putting themselves down and being like I'm not smart I'm not good <laughs> And then, like, his friends are, like, joking about the fact he's also not smart enough or good enough. Like, it's not really funny. This is genuinely... Annabeth Chase does not think Percy Jackson is dumb. This book has made Annabeth overly competent while making Percy completely incompetent. Except when Percy's by himself, then he's perfectly competent. But it's, like, I don't know, like, somehow when he's around Annabeth, she sucks any sort of brain out of him. And then she has, like, triple brain. Because she's, like, the smartest person ever. And, like, I love Annabeth. I'm an Annabeth stan here. But, like, this is not Annabeth. This is, like, Annabeth who is flawless. But Annabeth does have flaws. So, like, <laughs> what is happening? Like, that's what makes her a good character is the fact that she isn't perfect. It's what makes Percy a good character. He isn't perfect. <laughs> At one point, it was like, oh, Annabeth, like, shouted whatever. And Percy's like, does she think I'm done? Dumb? I'd never given her any reason. And then it trails off. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course she thinks I'm dumb. Because I am dumb. And it's like, no and like literally what book is it is it like it's one of like the short story things where it's like we see like annabeth's like demigod diaries or something like that where we see annabeth and she's literally like or maybe it's, it's the heroes of olympus might be in the heroes of olympus but like we literally see in her point of view her being like i hate how people underestimate percy because he's actually really smart and like did rick Riordan forget that okay it took until like 75 percent of the way through but we're finally getting some Annabeth appreciating Percy. <laughs> Never mind. It was literally a paragraph and it ended up with Annabeth looking for Percy to comfort her, basically. Which is still valid, but... Okay. Time to wrap this up. So, um, in this, I read Very Deep by Naomi Novik. I gave that a four stars. So, it's a short story collection. Kind of hard to judge it, but I would say they were all between three and four. Then we had Emily Wilde's A Map of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. I gave that a four stars. So I think I liked it less than the first book in the series, but I still did overall enjoy it. And then we had Percy Jackson and The Wrath of the Triple Goddess, which I don't really have much more to add to it, I guess. So um, I was kind of ranting and rambling as the book went on in this video already so I am giving it a three stars honestly I think it would have been a low four star but I literally had to take a star off because of all of the like pee and fart and toilish jokes like it was a lot and, like it did like I was like am I gaslighting myself is he gaslighting me being like no this is the way parts of Jack and books have always been like it did have me questioning myself for a little bit but I don't think that's true because I have seen some people agreeing with me in reviews overall most people seem to have really really loved it I just don't think that the characterization was done particularly well I just would desperately wanted there to be a conversation about his friends kind of I guess supporting him when like he is constantly doubting that he's good enough I just wanted that moment of the three of them to sit down together and be like you know appreciation for each other and then also again just like the inconsistencies like getting character names wrong as i said leo is supposedly tutoring him, him in spanish but like he's actually not around at this point he's not back in camp yet and also i i actually saw in one review someone said like like somewhere they mentioned turkey having like water but like it's actually landlocked so they're like that's literally something that takes like two seconds to correct <laughs> but like obviously and i find this with a lot of authors who have such a large catalog is at a certain point um editors don't look as much i hear that a lot with like sarah j mass books that like a lot of her later books are like clearly 
the editors kind of just like give it a quick and go yeah sure because they know people will buy it and I feel like it was kind of the same with this I think if there had been someone with a harsher eye I think it could have fixed a lot of the problems that I had with this and just been like I don't know just like fix those little consistency issues and so a little disappointing but oh well I shall get over it well thank you guys so much for watching I do hope you enjoyed it if you did subscribe and see you all in the next one bye